So to start, I'm going to marinate my beef flank steak. Here I have a third cup of low sodium soy sauce and I'm going to add around a third cup of citrus juice coming from oranges and limes. Now I'm going to add seasoning to this. First, I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of sugar. By the way, I will link several of my carne asada or fajita videos, which I do use marinades. Today, I'm just eyeballing. For example, a quarter to a half teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter to a half teaspoon of this Trader Joe's onion salt, and another quarter to a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. I'm going to add some cracked black pepper and then give it a mix. And I'm going to be marinating one pound of beef flank. You could use inside beef skirt, outside beef skirt, steak, whatever you like. So I'm going to place it in my little Ziploc or baggie here and I'm adding the marinade. I'm going to press out most of the air and I'm going to marinate this in the refrigerator overnight. Or if you're doing this the same day, you could do it for an hour or so. Okay, so here um, I have my marinated flank steak. So I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this when I was marinating it. Um, but today I want to make quesadillas. Typically, if you are making carne asada, you probably want to cook this or grill it in one whole piece. Cook it to your desired doneness, let it rest, then cut it up into slices for, you know, tacos or whatever it is that you're going to eat it with. But since I'm going to do this for quesadillas, I'm actually going to cut it first and then go ahead and cook it at a very high temperature and then let it hang out until I need it. So really, however you want to cook it, whatever's convenient for you, do that. But I'm going to chop it first and then just saute it and brown it really well. So here is how I chopped up my marinated meat. This was marinated beef flank. Um, I also like to saute with bell pepper, onion, uh, sometimes I like to do green onion in there. Uh, just I like to add fresh vegetables into the mix. It really does make a, a nice hearty quesadilla, but my kids are not really fans of like bell peppers and onions and things like that. And this is pretty much for them, so I'm just going to saute the meat for this. But you really can get creative with the filling and fresh uh, ingredients that can go into your quesadilla. So... I am preheating my, my pan here, or my pot, and if you want to know where I got this pot or what brand it is, I'll link a video. I recently did um, a video on cookware, things that you guys have asked, uh, where I get some of my cookware, things like that, so now I'm going to add it to my preheated pan. Okay, I'm going to shut off the heat and my little marinated beef, my carne asada beef is done. Okay, so my meat is ready and I'm just going to let it hang out, let it rest. In the meantime, here I have my flour tortillas. I'm also going to be using a melty cheese. This is Oaxaca cheese. You could use the cheese of your choice. I'm just going to shred this and that's it. Meat, cheese, tortilla. I'm going to butter or oil my griddle to get a nice crunch and crisp on the exterior, melty cheese on the inside, and quesadillas for lunch for the kids. It'll be great. Okay, so I have my griddle preheating on a medium heat. I really don't want this to cook fast and furious, so don't work with high heat. I really want to melt the cheese and create a nice toasty exterior. So medium, medium low is a place to be with this. Now it also depends how you like your quesadillas. Some people are not about the crunch and they're more about the melty center. So it really is up to you. There we go. And if it starts sizzling and getting too hot, just adjust your, your heat source. So going in with my melty cheese, now I'm going to go in with some meat. Now top it off with a little more cheese. That'll help the, uh, the top layer stick to the bottom layer. And now it's going to take a minute or so and I'm gonna give it a flip. And that's that. That's how I do quesadillas. It's kind of simple. 
Okay, so I'm going to use my really extra large pancake spatula. This works great for quesadillas. There we go. And as you can see, this tortilla is a lot smaller than the one on the bottom, but once the bottom starts to get toasty, it kind of shrinks back a bit. Um, but that's okay. They don't have to be perfect. It's all going to be good. And this toasty golden brown exterior is just texturally, it's one of, one of our favorite things. So, And you don't have to fill it with two uh, tortillas. You can also just kind of fold it over. Same thing. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.